the shepherd's very cautious. He watches everything. And in everything he does, the livelihood of the sheep is the reason he does what he does. Whether they understand it or not, they trust him. It says that in Isaiah 40 that the shepherd would gather them in his arms and he leads them. You say, well, it sounds pretty neat to be a shepherd. You know, back in the day that this was written in Isaiah's time, it was not a joyful job to be a shepherd. A father would look at his boys and say, I got six boys. These are all strong ones. They're going to be Marines. Amen. I'm going to send them to the war and defend the country. And this little boy down here, little David, I'm going to have you be a shepherd boy. You know, David's heart was in the war, folks. He, sl he slew Goliath. But yet, rather than being there trying to interfere, he was being faithful where God had placed him, and he's the one that won the war. In fact, God made David the greatest king Israel ever had by taking him from the fields, following the youths, great with young. The Bible says he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. There's got to be a connection between sheep and people somewhere. God made the greatest king and trained him in the shepherd's fields. David wrote the Psalms you have. Many of those, 90% of them are written by David, probably in a shepherd's field, and made him a great king. So the father would look down to the son, and he would say, son, I paid a lot of money for these sheep. They're really important to me, and son, I'm going to give you some tools. Here's your field. Here's your staff and your sling. I'm going to count on you to do the job. And son, when the bear and the lions come, you're going to have to defend them. You're going to have to be brave and put your own life aside if necessary. And the little boy would look at his father and he would see the admiration of his father towards him and the, his father's counting on him to be a good boy and obey. And that little boy would do anything rather than disappoint his father because he loved his father. He would just defend those sheep to death if necessary to see the gaze of pleasure on his father's eye. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Anyone listening that day with any sense of history would have no doubt thought back to Isaiah 40, the prophecy of the coming of the good shepherd hundreds of years earlier, that this was the one who was promised who would come and be the good shepherd, gathering the lambs in his arms, that one day when the father was up in heaven, he looked down at his son and said, Son, I'm going to send you down there to secure those sheep as your own, but it's going to cost you your life. You're going to have to go down there. And the, and, the, and the sun went down, was reduced to a manger and born among sheep and cows and goats in a smelly barn-like atmosphere to be able to secure the sheep as his. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. No doubt those Israelites thinking back, this was the promised one. At the command of his father, when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane the night before, he was to be crucified, said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And the father said, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to be willing to give your life to be able to call those your sheep. I challenge you to show me any other religion in the world who's whose founder gave their life for the followers and then rose again the third day and now ever lives to make intercession before those who call him Savior and Lord before the Father in heaven. Unlike anything else in the world, Jesus did that for you. To be able to call you his sheep, what a wonderful privilege to be one of his. 
When Jesus was here on earth, he told a story of a, of a farmer, that a shepherd that had a hundred sheep. And one turned up missing. And he went back and counted at night and there was only 99. He said, well, uh, you know, I've got, I had 199, so what? I got a couple others going to have, you is going to have lambs in a little while? It doesn't really matter. No, that's not what the shepherd did. Instead, he searched high and low, up and down to find the sheep that had run away, looking with all of his heart for this one. And when he had found him, he brought him back home and called all of his friends together and said, Look, this is the one that was gone astray. He's back again. That sheep had no idea the great extent to which that shepherd went to be able to reach that sheep. Perhaps he'd even run away before, not realizing that everything he had was with the shepherd. The Bible says, oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. There needs to be a time in every person's life where we called out to God for salvation. A time and a place in your life. You may not know the day, but you have a general idea of the time and place where you called out. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the ex accepted time. Folks, the day of salvation is not only the day when you hear it, that God loves you and sent His Son to die for you, but it's also a time period with which we are in right now, in which we are in right now. Time is a gift from God. If you've got time right now to sit here, time to think, time to contemplate, it is a gift from God. Time is going to be no longer, folks, when eternity kicks in. Time will be no longer. You may not have a tomorrow. You may not have next week to think about making Christ your Savior and Lord and being a part of his great flock. You know, Philip Keller was a great writer on the shepherd and the sheep. And Philip relates that just... Back in the Depression, when things were hard to get a hold of, he decided to get a flock of sheep. He placed them in a huge pasture that was several thousand acres large. His neighbor got a similar idea and put up a chain link fence around his property. It was very, very small. And Phillip's sheep had hundreds and hundreds of acres to graze in. And his neighbor thought he would give Philip Keller some competition. So he also got some sheep. Instead of placing them in a large grazing area, he put them in this chain link fence and left them there. In time, they ate every bit of grass that was available. It began to get thinner and thinner, and even through their wool coats, Philip could tell that they were going to die. Philip relates that he felt so sorry for those sheep trapped, trapped inside of that fence. For they would look through the iron fence between the chain link fence with longing eyes wishing that they could be on the other side where Philip's sheep grazed effortlessly day after day. The only thing separating them was those bars of fence between the two. What a horrible thing. Philip tried talking with his neighbor, but his neighbor was an ornery man and chose to let those sheep one by one starve to death inside that fence. He said, I'll never forget as long as I live looking through the iron parts of that, braces of that fence, looking at those poor sheep who wished that they could just have the fence open so they could get to the other side. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Savior today, folks, you're one of those sheep. I have news for you, Christ already came to break the fence. You have to accept it and walk through. The Bible says, I have set before you the way of life and the way of death. You must make the choice. When Christ came to the earth to die for our sins, he would never make anyone accept him as Lord and follow him. He wants willing love. He wants us to choose life. Choose life. Christ. Choose Him. One day Jesus was asked to give the ultimate price. And while just a few days before He was crucified, He was led through the city and hailed as King. Hosanna to the Son of David. 
A few days had passed and now they were going to kill him. 